Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another version of Coffee with Kelly. I hope everybody had a great week. You know, um, I had uh, my husband off for the last two weeks because of uh, personal things and then there were some funerals and stuff going on that we went to and um, so I really had the joy of having him around, so we did a lot of, uh, of things and around stuff around the house that we needed to do, and we just spent time together, and it was it was really nice. We had um, a great time, and it's about ready to come to the end, you know, because today's Saturday, and he'll be going back to work on Monday. Um, so I had a sneak in my kitchen to make my video because everybody's home, and you know, I am a mother and a wife, and. I have to make time for everybody, and I also have to make time for myself and for you guys. So here we are in Kelly's kitchen doing coffee with Kelly. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you today about something that I have never talked with um, to anybody about, except to the few people who actually live with me, know me. Um, and the reason being is this, is because I don't like giving energy or power or light to um, that situation um, because I try to be upbeat and have a positive attitude and try to be funny and see the good things in life and don't, you know, reside in the place where I'm complaining and in pain and, and you know, but um, I really think I need to make this video because I think it would help other people. And um, and this is how I helped myself, and I'd like to share this journey that I'm on, and I'm still on, and I'll be on for the rest of my life. And um, and you're here with me, and we can do this together, because I could show you things that I've done, and I've learned, and things that have worked for me, and maybe they can work for you too. And I'm also doing this video um, for my mom, so she won't be. Um, so stressed out and so worried as she always is because my mom is always looking um, towards helping me out and everything and, and she just needs to know that I'm in a good place and I'm okay and everything's just fine and you know my kids and my husband know that because they live with me um, so I wanted to talk to you about a journey that I have in life that I've basically had my whole entire life um, but it really came to fruit about four and a half years ago. I had a first, uh, my first episode of it, which is something that's called Bell's Palsy. Bell's Palsy is um, a facial paralysis, um, which affects the um, the nerve sheaths or the myelin sheaths within the facial nerve. It comes um, from the cervical, the back of the cranial, um, and, and the doctors really don't know what caused it. You know, most of the time they say it's from a virus, um, you know, that you have living inside you. And um, so that's how they treat it. And it doesn't always work that way, but it's something that you um, have to deal with. And when I first got this, let me tell you how it happened. We were on vacation in Wisconsin Dells, and we were having a great time in the, in, with the kids in the pool, and um, we were in the wave pool, and we're sitting on top of inner tubes, and we're laughing, and I laughed so loud, and my mouth opened wide, and I couldn't close it. And all of a sudden, I heard, like, ringing in my ear and severe pain in the back of my neck, and I couldn't feel my face on, on the left side. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm having a stroke. So we're in the middle of Wisconsin Dells and people who have ever been to Wisconsin Dells, you know, there's like no hospitals around. So here we are running out of the swimming pool in swimsuits and going up to the hotel room. And in the meantime, I'm yelling at my kids, get me some paper, get me a pencil. And I'm like writing out my will because I literally thought I was having a stroke. Um, Fortunately, it turned out just to be Bell's palsy, and I say that in small terms because Bell's palsy is a lifetime thing that you have to deal with. And um, I just recently 
deal with um, a second episode, which is even more rare because Bell's Palsy in itself is not very, um, it's not a very common thing that happens, and it, and not mostly in women, it happens more in men. Um, but a second episode of it, it, it turns it into an autoimmune disease. So it's, it is something in the same relationship that would almost like multiple sclerosis or lupus, those autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself because you have a dormant virus that lives in, in you and your body will attack that virus. And since this virus is, is attached to nerves, it like zaps out the nerve. So, um, you know, trying to kill the virus. And of course the virus doesn't die because, you know, we haven't found a way to kill viruses yet. We just found a way to control things. So what what happens there is that your nerves are zapped out and it takes three or four months for your nerves to really come back and connect again. So in the meantime, um, you know, you, you can't, it depends. You have different, people have different severities of it. I think, you know, like the second time around, it was even worse, more severe um, for me because it's just a progression of the damage of the nerves that have already been uh, burned out. So, um, and it's very painful. It's very painful. So the first thing <clears throat> when you go to the hospital, you know, this is what they do. They give you a bag of medicine. So this was my life. Okay? And, you know, you have pain, so they're giving you everything for the pain, you know. 800 milligram ibuprofen for inflammation, and, you know, they give you, uh, codeine, and they give you hydrocodone, and just a whirlwind of lovely things for all these pain. And then, you know, when you're eating all of this, these painkillers, um, on top of that, they give you antiviral medicine. So they give you like one gram pills of Valtrex, which are $50 a pill. It was expensive. And um, then they give you prednisone. Now, prednisone in itself is its own ball of problems. Prednisone is a steroid, and they give it to people who have uh, inflammatory problems or autoimmune problems. So it will help with the inflammation and help to stop in the process. And after you're taking all of this big bag of pills, then you wind up getting gastritis or acid indigestion or GERD or whatever and your heart is burning up. So then they start, you know, putting on the ratatidine, you know, the Zantac for your stomach ulcers. And then you have to take the Prilosec for that. And then you have to have, you know, um, so that was the bag I had to carry around all the time. And this is what I have at home. Okay? Now, let me show you how this works when you have these kind of things and these kind of problems. And you have to take your blood pressure every day because inflammatory diseases will make your blood pressure rise. So you have to watch your blood pressure. And, um, then from, from the blood pressure, you know, and then you have to take the prednisone. The prednisone and, you know, you take it for a long time. And then from all of that, that winds up being so, uh, such a shock to your system that you wind up getting, like, bacterial infections because your immunity is so low. So then you're on antibiotics. I was on antibiotics for a whole entire year, and let me tell you, um... That really destroyed my gastrointestinal and digestive system. Then, while you're taking prednisone, prednisone will make your blood pressure go through the roof. It's ridiculous. You know, and if you stop taking it without tapering it off, you will send yourself into an adrenal crisis. Um, and 
that's not fun because yeah, you'll wind up in the emergency room. And let me tell you what our, our fun friend prednisone does. Our fun friend prednisone will stop the inflammation, but it will make you gain, in my personal own case, 70 pounds. Yes, this medicine does that. It also made my blood pressure have me go to the emergency room various occasions because it was 220 over 192. So it will also raise your blood pressure. And after raising your blood pressure, it will make your blood sugar go through the roof. So that's when the lancets come in and you have to carry your little kit around you with you everywhere because now you have chemically induced diabetes and you have to test your blood sugar all the time. And then what do they do for that? They give you blood sugar medication. And when your blood pressure goes up, you start swelling. So the thing that's supposed to keep you from inflammation is actually inflaming you. And I mean, my legs were like swollen watermelons that had the weight of lead. It was ridiculous. So then they'll come and give you this water pill to help your kidneys produce more urine so you can urinate. So in the end, I've got all these, you know, plus the blood pressure thing, plus all this medicine I gotta take because this is like the pain and all that kind of stuff. Um, and on top of that, you know, and let me tell you what I did. And you see, my medicines were about $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month. So I decided enough is enough. No doctor could figure out what to do. So I took all this stuff and dumped it in the garbage. Out. It's out of my life. And doctors can't tell you the reason why you get these kind of autoimmune things. They understand now that things could be caused by viruses and um, so I guess I've been on this journey for a very long time because I had a very bad virus when I was three that I actually remember with the febrile seizures that I had I had scarlet fever and I remember actually um, passing on to the next level of life and I was in a very scary place. I was three years old and I remember this vividly through the febrile seizure that I had that I actually went to a very fiery place where the floor on my bed just fell through and my bed was just being held up by peaks and down below was like an abyss and fire was coming up and all these little red demons I want to say were jumping on my bed poking me, poking me, poking me. Now, when I was three, I talked very well. I was the firstborn child in my family, so everybody talked, all the adults talked to me, so I learned really fast how to talk. And in this dream, you know, for some reason, I, I remembered hearing a conversation between my mom and I think my grandma, and they were saying something about if you were ever afraid of something, all you had to do was call out God's name or Jesus' name. And, and so I'm three years old. I'm in the middle of this infra world kind of place between here and there and being very sick on the edge of dying and coming back to life. And the only thing I could think was, God, take me out of here. God, take me out of here. Take them away. Take them away. And I woke up packed in ice, um, full of a rash from the scarlet fever, and uh, that's something I'll never forget. And that scarlet fever, you know, it can uh, damage your mitral valve and it damages your kidneys and, you know, there's a lot of damage that's done in it. And it's also one of those viruses that will stay within your body as well as the chickenpox virus will stay in your body and later on it can produce the shingles. So, um, Bell's palsy is kind of like a type of, I, I want to say shingles because it could be from that same virus, but then again, nobody really knows. 
um, but it's internal and it burns the myelin sheaths off of your nerves. And each time you get it again, it's progressive and it gets worse. So here we are. So I dumped all the chemicals and said, you know, if the doctors can't figure out what's going on after all of these MRIs and all the blood tests and the spinal taps and everything, and they, they can't find out exactly what's happening and they want to say this, but they don't know that and they really don't know, you know, that's when you got to go in and you got to start. So the first thing I did, um, and this was the first time I got this um, Bell's Palsy, the first thing I did is I bought my first Natural Cures book. This is the first one I bought a long time ago. This is really old. And uh, this was my first book. And it was written by a medical doctor, but also a natural man. And that is what made me decide to go back to school and study and do holistic medicine and become a natural path doctor. And that's where my path is right now. I am um, will be receiving um, this 2016 um, my practitioner's license to be a natural um, naturopathic doctor and um, and I'll, I'm also studying for my PhD in philosophy for holistic counseling so I'll be taking you guys with me along the way and showing you how I got back on my feet and, and, and healthy and you know so the same time I bought that natural book I bought this you know the prescription drug reference and it tell it shows you pictures of all the drugs and it, it tells you what they're what they're for what their doshas is for what the indication what the counter indication so this is something really really good you want to have because when you get a big bag of pills like this you want to make sure that you're not interacting or doing something that can cause you even worse health and if if I would have known better um, before I took the steroid I would have acted not to take it because it really didn't help <clears throat> it didn't help and it just actually hindered the process it made me gain tons of weight and from that it you know here comes the blood pressure and the diabetes and all that stuff and that's where I was standing and that was on Father's Day and um, that was Father's Day this year so you see, used to see a lot of pictures of me and stuff and I always had glasses on and that was because my eye was paralyzed open and it's starting to get better now once in a while it flickers but if you look at my earlier Coffee with Kelly videos you would see that when I would blink one eye would blink faster and the other eye would only blink once or twice. It was still stuck. And I, you know, um, when you have that, you cannot taste food. Um, you get like a metallic taste in your mouth. Your tongue falls asleep. You cannot talk very well because everything is facially paralyzed. You cannot feel anything from here all the way down. And the prednisone made it worse where it gives you residual, uh, residual effects that you will get inflammation. So then I started getting the inflammation first. It started in my hands, like like how you get rheumatoid arthritis where they just be so tight you couldn't take your rings off. Um, then I'd get it in my legs to where they would swell up like watermelons and you have to put your feet up because they hurt so bad and burn. It's just, it's, it's not fun. So there's a lot of things that I learned and I'm writing a book about it. And I learned a lot of things on how to fix um, fix the Bell's palsy and the autoimmune disease because it's all interconnected. Um, every autoimmune disease just means that your body's attacking itself, and and, and that's that's what it does. MS it'll attack the myelin sheaves in in different parts of your body. Bell's palsy does too. It doesn't just affect the face. It can be bilateral. It can affect both sides of the face. In my case, it like went all the way down to, you know, it started in the face, but and after that, um, the inflammation and the pain and the pins and needles would go all the way down to the um, coaxial, which would make it very hard to walk, especially on the left side. Um, so there was a lot of things I did, and 
you know, one of the things I first did was I changed my medicine because I, I changed my toothpaste because uh, and drinking water because fluoride is another toxin. And it's a neurotoxin, you know, and we put it in there so we don't get cavities in our teeth, which is all great and everything. But when you're dealing with um, diseases, you want to try and keep your lifestyle as pure as possible and take all the chemicals out of it. Um, so I changed my toothpaste and this is one that I use now. You can buy it at Whole Foods. It's just a regular, uh, it's called Kiss My Face and it has no fluoride in it and it's minty flavor and, um, cleans your teeth up nice. It's got whitening action and blah, blah, blah. It just doesn't have the chemicals that the old toothpaste does. And, um, I started drinking alkaline water. Alkaline, no disease can live in an alkaline environment. Our pH balance in our body, if you are too acidic, that's where the uh, sicknesses come in, the cancers and the um, the reoccurrence of the virus that's being um, reenacted in your body, the shingles, you know, and it could, there, there's a number of things, but keeping your body at a neutral or alkaline base is, is fantastic. And with all those medications, it wound up giving me GERD, which is just lovely because then you can you can only eat like carbs because everything else just seems too out of you know too spicy or too acidic. And what does that do? That just helps pack on the pounds even more. So I stopped taking all that stuff and um, I replaced it with natural things. So for the GERD now, I would just take normal, regular, old baking soda. You know, baking soda, that's what Zantac is made out of. You take the baking soda, put it in like a half a cup of water, stir it up really good, and you can drink it. Works just fine. I changed the oils that I ate. No more vegetable oils. No more uh, canola oils. I started buying just... 100% organic, like here's one that I use, like that I'm using right now. It's organic uh, olive oil. Okay, and um, I cook with this, use this in my salads and everything. It really, really helps keep your, your lubrication on and you really need to drink a lot of water when you have autoimmune disease, any kind of disease, because your body um, the blood tries to maintain its pH at a 7.4 uh, seven is neutral. Anything below seven is acidic. Um, and most of the stuff that we eat is acidic. I mean, even coffee. Coffee is acidic. It is a four on the pH. And you can raise it. I'll, I drink coffee occasionally because I don't want to give up all the little luxuries in life. So um, when I drink coffee, I make it with my alkaline water or you could put a little baking soda in it just a pinch you don't want too much it'll really be salty um and i started juicing and i'm going to be making videos and posting about so the different juices i make for the different um like for inflammation and for slow thy uh, thyroid and your metabolism is low and um i bought this stuff that i use in my juicing it's a alkalizer and a detoxifier. It's from Whole Foods. It's a raw organic green superfood, you know, and it comes in a, uh, it, you know, it's, it's green. It smells like dirt, tastes like dirt, but you know what? I'd, ru I'd mu uh, rather eat some dirt than be processed by chemicals for the rest of my life because, you know, God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. So put it in your mouth and make it work. And one of the things that I really found that totally helped, and I was thinking out of the box with this, I live by Devon Street, and it is mainly an Indian, Pakistan, Middle Eastern street. And they got all these cool stores, and all and, you know, there's a lot of vegetable stores. And I go in and I see this vegetable that I was thinking like is ginger, and and it's not. It's turmeric. You know, turmeric. This is a root here, and this is like a godsend for inflammation. It kind of looks like, yeah, you open it up, it's orange, it's got this bright orange color. 
kind of, it doesn't really have a smell, it doesn't really have a flavor per se. It's not like curryish or anything like that. Um, but turmeric is, um, most people have that spice in their, in their cupboard. And it, it's a spice like to make yellow rice or things turn yellow or, you know, like yellow mustard. The thing that makes the mustard yellow is turmeric. Now, I put, a piece of this root when I make my juices in it because this is a great anti-inflammatory. This is like naproxen, motrin, prednisone extreme here. This is what's going to help you cool down your nerves, calm that inflammation. It's going to stop your stomach from all of that acid indigestion. If you want to make a tea out of it, you can boil it. It makes it a nice orange color. Um, you know, stay away from sugar unless it's like raw sugar, put a little bit of raw sugar. I use uh, organic honey. Organic honey makes it so delicious and it has antibacterial, antiseptic um, capabilities in it. So it's really good. And if you don't want to go through the whole thing of using a root and you really, you're feeling a little like um, waterlogged that day, a little inflammation, you can, they also sell turmeric tea. Um, this is one of them. This one also has ginger and licorice and rose in it. There's other flavors, but mainly it's turmeric. And, you know, you drink it, you know, you got, you know, you got to get used to the way things taste because it's way better than taking medicine and it's way healthier and your body is going to appreciate it. And, you know, I really liked this brand, this brand knew me, because when I was reading the packages on, you know, how to do it, it says that um, the instruction says mindful steeping. And it says, bring fresh water to a boil and pour over a bag of three roots. Steep for eight to ten minutes while breathing deeply and, pound, and pondering positive thoughts. Um, this is a helpful turmeric, revitalizes the mind and balances the body. Now, if that isn't an awesome message to put on some tea, and by the way, that's organic, no GMO. Um, right there, that takes all the inflammation out of everything. Uh, and another one of my favorite teas, especially when you're tummy and you want to go to sleep and your nerves are a little shut, you know, you drink the organic chamomile, uh, chamomile with lavender. That's really good, especially at night or after eating. Um, now, people who um, knew me like my whole life or knew me before I got sick, um, I, I gained 70 pounds. I did. And a lot of people were like, whoa, what happened, Kelly? And I was always really quiet. I didn't say anything because I like taking care of my things with myself and God. And that's basically what, what it is because I don't like worrying people and I don't like, you know, broadcasting my business. But sometimes you need to because sometimes you're here, you're put here to help. And, you know, this, I, um, when I got my last relapse of the Bell's palsy. I got it on Father's Day and you know we were going out with my husband to eat and I just had this tremendous headache. It's just it's ridiculous the pain that that's involved in it and you know I'm like well we're going to go out anyway to eat and I remember I was trying to eat and we went to eat shrimp at a, a, a place and I couldn't even like because you can't feel your lips so it's kind of like when you go to the dentist and your mouth is all you know numb and you know, like you're drooling all over the place and it was like I didn't want to spoil my husband you know oh you know I, I you know I'm sorry I'm not going out because when these when this these attacks happen it's like it's sudden then the next day you wake up and then your face is all you know and um so you go to the doctor and they give you the prednisone and this was um I already had a class that I was signed up for to be an angel card uh, certificate uh, cer certificate and with my mom that we were already signed up for the workshop at the um, university where we're going in to get certified to be our angel card readers with Radley Valentine and there was no way on earth or Bell's palsy that I was going to miss it. So um, 
one week after I had it, while I was on prednisone for one week, and you know, in one week when you're on prednisone, you can gain 20 pounds, and that's exactly what happened to me. So here's a picture. I don't know if you can really see it very good. Myself and Radelay, just six months ago. Oh, it bounced out. I'm going to try to post it, but I'm not really technically suave yet. But if you could see here my face, okay, this was like a month in, I mean, a, a week into me having uh, the Bell's palsy. But you could see I, I went up to 224 pounds. 224 pounds. And this is from drugs that are supposed to help you. When I ended up in the hospital with my blood pressure way, way over 220, I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore. And I started studying and finding ways to make myself better. Because people who know me um, before the Bell's Palsy episode, the first one, which was four and a half years ago, this was, this was me then. Let me see, four and a half years ago. See that? Yeah, 140 pounds. So, um, that's what autoimmune disease or cancer or anything else will do to you. And the first thing you have to do is go into yourself and decide how do you want to deal with it. Do you want to... Be positive or negative and I decided you know when I was a little girl and I was three years old I decided I wanted to live I didn't want to go to wherever I was going to go after I went into that seizure when I was sick with the first virus what's called fever and I asked God to take me out of it and and he put me back here so I didn't want to let that three-year-old little girl down and um, it's all how you look at life so I started doing my videos and you could see in my first couple videos that I couldn't talk very well and I still can't. I still can't pronounce a lot of things not because I'm illiterate it's just because I have a paralyzed face and um, a lot of people don't know that because I don't go around preaching my problems or asking for any handouts. I deal with things as they go because that's just the kind of strong Aries person I am. So. Um, we'll be dealing with this together. I'm going to be posting a picture of what my new medication looks like, which is my refrigerator, and how I have changed my diet. First, I changed my thought process. I had to think, what did I want to do? And I changed the way I thought, my outlook on life. I changed... I changed friends on Facebook. I didn't want to see any more negativity because I didn't want to be a part of that collective negative energy that just brings you down because when you are sick, you need 100% positive and you got to start with yourself. So I started doing my videos and my videos were more as a therapeutic thing for myself also because I wanted to, um, you know, let myself know that um, that I could do it, you know, and when you put a video on Facebook for the whole entire world, you are making yourself a contract and an obligation that you are going to be taking care of yourself. Um, and, and that's how it is. Like, this is a picture that I took of my refrigerator. I was posting it on Facebook to show how you prepare your food for your juices and you have it on hand. And I threw out everything that had chemicals in it. Um, I mean, everything. You know, you really have to change your lifestyle, the way you eat, because our natural medicine is in our diet. And a lot of the reasons why viruses that we get that we weren't protected from when we were younger, um, that they have, you know, shots for now today or something, is you have to maintain a really positive attitude and you have to change your diet and yes most of the juices taste like dirt but you know what dirt is way better than eating something that's made out of petroleum um you know that's not natural it, i want to eat something that's made out of my own dna we have the same dna as trees and plants and the dirt so 
there's, you know, a good and bad aspect. Yes, you will get better. It'll take a little bit, but it's a lifetime process, and you have to learn to eat this way. And yes, I know it's hard because you'll be giving up a lot of things, but you don't have to always give up everything you want. You don't have to just become some hippie juicer all the time, you know, just drinking this crap and, you know, um, only, you know, brushing with this stuff. You don't. You do it with moderation because there's a lot of things. Like I had to take carbohydrates. In order for me to get back down to my normal weight, I had to take carbohydrates out. And that was hard because that was the only thing that was easy on my stomach because of all the medications and all of the antibiotics, you know, it, it made ulcers in my stomach, which was making internal bleeding. And so baking soda helped out with that. And, you know, mashed potatoes was my go-to food. And so was bread and so was rice because it was very easy on my stomach. Carbs are simple sugars, but you know, when you have prednisone, you cannot have all the simple sugars and the steroid and all that because your blood sugar will be sky high and then you'll feel even more sick and nauseous and tired all the time and you will sleep 24 hours a day and that's not a way to live. So um, now I'll still eat mashed potatoes but I won't eat them in a way to, I'll look at mashed potatoes like it's chocolate cake. You know chocolate cake is something that you love but you're not going to eat all the time. And I would, um, if you eat carbs, you know, on your dinner table, if you're going to have rice, have a little bit of rice, you know, a portion, like the size of your palm, not a huge, you know, plate of arroz, you know, just rice. And um, don't eat bread with it. You know, give and take a little because you're taking care of yourself. And who's going to take care of you better than yourself? You know, so... That's how we start out, and um, it's a long process, and I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I, it's a trial and error thing, and I see what things work for me, and things that work for me, I'm going to share with you and make videos about them, and and show you the ingredients, and, and tell you um, about the different things that work for me, and maybe it'll work for you too, and that's what gets us to where we need to get, you know, to be healthy. It's a lifetime process, you know. You have to do things to help yourself, you know. It's it's really nice to have prayer and to have that positive inner peace, yes, but God helps people who help themselves. He's not going to come to your house and prepare your dinner for you. You need to make sure that you are putting in your temple what is good for your temple. Okay, that means you have to give up smoking, you have to give up any kind of alcohol. I mean, you can occasionally have a glass of wine, but you have to look at that glass of wine like it's a huge piece of chocolate cake, and you remember that. You have to give up sodas, because soda is just like empty calories that eat your inside. It's so acidic. You know, um, they showed that they had a study that anybody who drinks any kind of pop, soda, Coke, um, Sprite, whatever, and um, they did a study that showed that cells of the body in a petri dish in two seconds will turn into cancer cells when soda is added to them. So yes, soda is one of those things that causes cancer. So nick it. You know, if you're going to drink a soda once in a while, have it be at a birthday party that you only go to once a year because otherwise going to be sick and then you're going to be looking for medications that are going to make you more sick you know I'm not telling everybody to stop and throw out their medicines because some people need medicines my husband he has a thyroid problem and he needs to take replacement hormones for that thyroid problem um, but hormones is a totally different thing oh and with Bell's palsy um, it tends to come when you're older, especially when you're going through hormone changes or when, like, especially with women, a lot of times women will get Bell's palsy when they're pregnant uh, in their last month of uh, their third trimester uh, or when you're, like, uh, getting older and you're getting ready to go into perimenopause or menopause or if you had a miscarriage. 
um, because that stress hormonal change triggers that virus to come active and then your body attacks it and just Star Wars the myelin sheaths out of them and you know you're all like oh I like that all day so that's not fun but there's ways that you can um, prevent it and that's through nutrition and positive energy and positive thinking and positive ways of taking care of yourself and you know you have to um, become informed and educate yourself because the doctors don't know everything they're there they studied there where they're at um, but there are certain things that they still can't understand they don't have cures for viruses they have vaccines for viruses that are like sometimes they work sometimes they don't you know you can still get the chickenpox virus even if you have the chickenpox vaccine that's because viruses are like an alien being they are very intelligent and adaptable and they mutate it's not like a bacteria that's something from this planet that we can counter affect it I am totally within the idea of thinking that alien DNA is involved in virus or whatever it is because it's really not of our DNA process and that's the reason why it's so hard for us to kill and it was so easy to figure out how to kill bacteria and bacterial infections because usually like kills the like so you take the bacteria from the penicillin and you kill you know the bacteria in your infection the viruses unfortunately don't work that way what they basically do is they give you things to alleviate their symptoms and let me tell you most of the drugs that they give you actually make things a lot worse so you know you can um, go online go to the bookstore get books you know especially if you live in the city like here in the city we can go um, to one of the universities and buy a medical book you can buy that you know if you really would like to you could start studying again like I did because I wanted to make sure that only that my my lifestyle my children's lifestyle will be healthy um, I could help out my mom and her lifestyle and be healthy and my husband with his lifestyle and then once I have that practice and let me tell you if you live in my house you are a guinea pig to my medical practices here because I will try all my juices on you and all my new creams and potions and massages and I bought a massage um, jade roller infrared massage bed that helps decompress the spine and your cervical um, area here um, in your neck and it has the infrared um, wave that will help um, blast all of those cells and you know get them all working and everything and so if you lived in my house you would definitely be part of the experiment but um, as I'm learning you're learning because I'm going to be helping you so you can get to where I am because I'm not a hundred percent yet but let me tell you I am pretty good I can blink my eyes together now almost I can smile better got my smile back so you know I can flare my nostrils a little bit it's getting better um, but I'm also losing the weight and not because I'm outside exercising like crazy you know literally I would love to tell you that you don't even really need to go and do all that crazy exercise if you just eat the right way because your body is going to take those fat cells because sugar is just converted straight into your you know fat cells um, and um, when you cut that out of your diet you are having your liver telling your pancreas to use its own reserves so you're gonna start you know start burning that stuff off and you're gonna start feeling great and let me tell you I feel great because when they gave me all those medicines going here this is gonna make you feel better let me tell you I felt like crap I was 70 pounds overweight now I was testing myself every day for diabetes I didn't even have a good finger left on me I couldn't eat anything because I was so nauseous all the time because I wound up getting all that acid ingestion and the, 
ulcers and all kinds of crap started happening. Um, let me tell you, you can make yourself better. And you and you and when you're in this process, you make yourself, you rejuvenate yourself, you make yourself younger, you make your nails in your hair. For three years, my hair did not grow. My hair did not grow. My nails would not grow. Now my nails grow like weeds. My hair is like down to my butt. It's because of the way you eat. You're putting things in your system that your body just doesn't need. So as we're going through this path, and now everybody knows that, you know, Kelly is not one of those people with that fantastic lifestyle and God, what does she do? And, and it's not like that. Kelly has gotten to where she's gotten through a lot of trial and error and a lot of tears and a lot of sickness and a lot of hospitalization, but also the realization that I was put here for a purpose and that three-year-old girl that was born wanted to do that purpose. So I'm doing for that little three-year-old girl that I was back then when I decided that I was going to choose life and not death. So here I am, folks. So um, let's do some cards before I clear myself out for the week. Now earlier, before I was leaving, um, I pulled some cards, just two cards for myself, because, you know, I was talking to my mom, I talk to my mom every day, she's like my buddy, and um, she's really worried, she really wants me to get back to a neurologist and get all kinds of tests done, and you know, all the tests come out the same way, they just don't know what to do, it's just, you know, and when they see me now, they're like, whoa, what did you do? What happened? Where did it go? We can't find it anywhere. And yeah, that's not me, folks. That's that's up there. But let me tell you, I took a big part in it because I decided to take care of my life and take care of myself. And that's where it got me. And I'm getting better every day. And it's great. So when I pick the two cards, I got these two cards. And let me tell you, usually when I get anything that has to do with air or the uh, sword, I'm like, oh, you know, because that's always something like something gets stabbed in the back or something like that. So the first one I got was the six, the six of air. And this was for myself personally, because, you know, after I talked to my mom, I was like, you know, I'm really thinking that I'm doing okay. Let me see. Let's see what my cards say. What does my cards say? And they're like, things are looking up. Okay, it's the end of a difficult situation, and there's a trip, and you see that's, you know, the the unicorn is getting on a ship and leaving all of the other unicorns behind because he decided, hey, I'm not going to be part of that collective, you know, bringing down the world. I'm going to go and do my own thing, and it's going to be remarkable, and, and it's going to be great. And it also says it's also the end of an illness. So yes, the end of an illness. And you're the one who decides if you're going to let it come back or not. So then I picked this one, the Knight of Air. Well, they actually came out together. And it's another uh, sort. And the Knight of Air says that, you know, events will travel at great speed. And um, there's creative solutions. And, you know, take careful consideration of your options. So, yeah, that kind of pertains to what exactly what I did. I threw out my medicines. Do not recommend you doing this without thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly investigating because there's a lot of medications out there that you do need, especially if it's hormonal um, or blood pressure, heart. Um, but there's a lot of medications that you could do without. But some medications need to be tapered off. So I just don't want you to go one day the next day, well, I'm not taking my steroid anymore. You have to taper it off or you're going to go into an adrenal attack and that is not going to be fun. So don't do that. That is not my recommendation. I did taper off over three or four days the dosage of my prednisone. I just didn't stop it right there. But after that, I did stop. It it was a little harsh on my body, because. but let me tell you, all that medicine I was taking was making me dizzy and nauseous. I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk. I was like 
wobbly legged. It was ridiculous. And now I feel top of the mountain, over the hill. And every video that I make, I see myself progressing. And I hope to see all my friends and everybody who watches this video at that same level. So let's see what we have for the week. We're in the first week of December. Yay, December! It's going to be Christmas time! That's exciting. We put up our tree. My last video, you've seen my tree. It's white. It's a white Christmas tree. But it's so pretty, you know. Now it is. Because I learned to appreciate from a very early age, since the time I was three, that, you know, I chose life. And I, and I appreciate life. And I appreciate everything in life. So... You know, it all depends on what kind of attitude that you have. So we have our first card here for Monday, Tuesday. And let's see what we have for... This is uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And we'll get a nice card, angels, please. Give us a nice card for the weekend. Because then we'll be going back to school for the one last week, and then we're out on vacation. So yay, vacation. So for the beginning of the week, we have the Seven of Fire, fire sign. That's the action. And so she sees she's the Seven of Fire on her dragon. And, you know, seven is that number of faith, okay? And faith is, you know... Having, uh, taking action is having faith in yourself. So defend your beliefs and your decisions and stand your ground and choose your battles wisely. So that's, that's what she talks about. She says that, you know, if you do have circumstances where you're having your health, um, on the line and you believe that there's a better way, stand your ground. You don't have to believe what one doctor says. Go get a second opinion, a third opinion. Get as many opinions as you need. Go not only from a medical doctor, you can go to a metaphysical doctor, you can go to an alternative medicine doctor. They work in hand in hand in partnerships. It's not all about chemical pills. It's about the way you eat, the attitude you possess. It's all of that. It's one big combination of a mixture of wonderful things in your life that you can have. You know, medical and metaphysical go hand in hand. You can have naturopathic medicine because already God already gave us his whole entire drug supply in his um, in nature. And ooh, another really great thing to eat when you have Bell's palsy is celery. Celery, celery, celery. Pack it in as much as you can because celery is just like wonderful. It keeps you hydrated. Um, cucumbers, pineapple. Those are another good things. So choose your battles wisely. You know, you don't want to be, you know, you choose which battle you want to go to and stand your ground. So if you don't believe you're getting the best treatment you could, you know, educate yourself. Go Barnes and Nobles and buy some books. Go to the medical bookstore and get some books. You know, take a class. Um, study. It's, it's your health. You uh, take care of it the way you want to. Do you really want to have it in somebody else's hands who, who has a million other people in their hands also and then a personal life to add to that? Nobody's going to take care of you like you. So stand your ground. Seven is faith and action. So fire is action. Seven is faith. Have action and faith in your action. Do that. And for the middle of the week, we have the night of the earth. The night of the earth, he's coming in. He's already passed through the mountains and he's grounded and working his way through the forest. And he says he's loyal and dedicated and honorable and he's kind. So, you know, take time to buckle down and get your things done. You know, you gotta investigate and do what you need to do to make yourself better. Um, honor your commitments, but there's also a guardian angel. So when you're having faith in the action that you're taking for standing your ground, you have a guardian angel to back you up. And the night of the earth um, is telling you all of the medicine you need is in the earth. You see all of those herbs and leaves and spices and trees and 
you know, the super green, tastes like dirt stuff, which is actually like a million different kind of every herb there is in that stuff, let me tell you, that's like super potent. So, um, take care of yourself and and have faith in your action that you're doing. And, it, you know, you're dealing with, you got to take care of yourself and get things done because nobody's going to do it unless you do it yourself, you know. Um, so do that. And for the weekend, we get the awakening. We have Archangel Gabriel. And Archangel Gabriel, she's um, the one who came down and, and told the Virgin Mary that she was going to be having Jesus. But it says to look at things from a different perspective. You see, Archangel Gabriel is hanging upside down, flying in from heaven, so she could see the world from a different point of view. So if you think out of the box, especially when it comes for your health, let me tell you, miracles happen because we are made of that same divine energy that makes the miracles, darling. And you can take care of yourself and have a positive attitude. And don't worry about things so much. And don't dwell on owning or giving any power to that. And this will probably be the last time that you see me doting on having any kind of thing wrong. Because that's not where my heart and my mind is at. My mind is that the half glass is full, not empty. Because there are so many options out there. Taking medications is one option. Taking care of yourself, there's a million options. So there's a temporary standstill because sometimes when you're sick, you need to rest. That's, you know, uh, I showed you earlier the air signs, the unicorns. Those are always usually telling you about stopping, taking some rest, um, reanalyzing, studying, looking things you know through a different perspective you know perspective so now you're 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 waking up and you're seeing things and things might stand still for a minute because you have to regroup and take your your power back because all of a sudden you woke up and you're like whoa i could take care of my health myself without taking all these medications that are making me even worse so you got to you know let that sink in you got to let that sink in. There's, there's tons of ways. I mean, when you're in physical pain, you don't need to sit, take prescription drugs for physical pain. There's, you can do things like turmeric is anti-inflammatory. Get a massage. Get, go get a massage. Massages are like God's blessing from the hands. You know, massages will make you rest and make you feel great, go to a chiropractor, they can adjust, you know, chiropractors kind of do like the physical version of Reiki, go to Reiki, get a Reiki healing, have all of that energy focused into you, have that energy and all of that trauma pulled out and, and transpired into love, and have that positive energy fill up that hole where that where that uh, mutation was taken out, you know what I'm saying? Chiropractors are physical Reiki masters because they're physically touching as a Reiki master would, you know, touch you with, with the energy and the hands heat up and you're receiving direct energy. A chiropractor will physically get in there and fix your broken kundalini and crack your chakra. So you can do that. Go to a massage therapist, get a Swedish massage or a you know, but if there's one thing if you have an autoimmune disease, especially if you have Bell's palsy, do not apply heat, okay? Stay away from like hot tubs. And when your neck starts hurting and stuff, I learned this through trial and error, it makes it worse. Do not put, even though you think that's the best thing for you to put a heating pad on your neck when, when you're first starting to get that parallel, that par, um, paralyzing feeling, it's just making it worse because you're, your nerves are being burned, and then you're putting heat on top of that, you are burning them at a faster rate. So um, the opposite would be to cool it down, you know, ice it maybe, put a little ice pack or something on there. Would you not use heat because when you're burning your myelin sheaves, you're, you're causing inflammation 
as it is um, within the body. So you putting heat on that is just like, you know, applying butter to a burn. It really doesn't help at all. It, it hinders it. And it here says it's important to be yourself. So when you're looking at your your way of living, your way of life from a different perspective, it's important to be who you are. Don't change who you are. I don't have to stay that person that I was a couple of months ago where I was 224 pounds and sick. You know, I still made myself get up and go to my classes and do my things and things that I needed to do because you don't want to isolate yourself from people. You know, I made myself go to the store even though I had, I had to put glasses on so I could protect my eye. And, you know, I would smile and I was like, you know, smiling crooked and stuff. And it, you know, and I just laughed it off because what can you do? I mean, what can you really do? You can't really do anything. You could just learn to live with it. And that's what you, you know, you learn to live with it and you find a way to fix it. And that's what I did. You don't want to give up your life and, and isolate yourself. You know, get out there and do things. So, um, we have a, a 12 and a 7. So that's a 19. And then this is a, no, a 7, 19, and then this is 1. So that would be 20. So when you bring 20 down, that would be, um, common numeral would be a 2 in numerology. And 2 is, um, Right when you when you are at the beginning, now you're learning to walk. So this is basically what what this means. You got your information, now you take it and you use it. You study it and you take care of yourself because you know God loves you and you gotta love yourself and you gotta remember that person that you were when you were three years old. You choose to be here. So make it a good one. Okay everybody? I'm sending you tons and tons of love, tons of energy, tons of good eating, good positive vibes, um, a wonderful week, and don't forget, my darlings, to always hold the light. Bye.